beautiful Cherished ladies. How are you guys doing? I am so excited that me and Pastor Alicia get to have our cherished conversation this morning. I'm Pastor Katie, or Katie for my personal Instagram friends, and I am the campus pastor over in Eastlake, and I am obsessed with Cherish. Beautiful Pastor Leanne asked us to share this morning. Yeah. We love you, Pastor Leanne. We love you. So, so much. And Pastor Alicia, yes. also my friend, she oversees <laughs> pastoral care here at Awaken Church. Yeah. And um, the best job ever, literally the best job ever. <laughs> I get to care for people all the time. <laughs> Fun fact, I worked under Pastor Stacy before Pastor Alicia stepped in doing pastoral care. That was my first taste of Awakened Church. That's right. But we thought it'd be really um, fun and awesome to bring up the conversation surrounding the topic of change. Change, you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> And when Pastor Leanne asked me, that was the first thing that came to my mind is, wow, how much change have we all gone through this year? This year has been an epic year of just change. It's like, wow, can I at least have my coffee the same? No, I that know. was close too. I know, every single thing is different. <laughs> But, Everything was changing. Yeah, and I think too, so Alicia mm -hmm. and I have been friends. We've been friends for years no, yeah, like, I think what your first year that you came yeah, to the church, how many years eight, ago was that? I think it was seven years ago. Yeah, we became friends then and um, kind of locked arms and started skipping down the path of life. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but I thought what a better conversation to have with you because we're kind of opposites. We're a little bit yin and yang. Yes. Alicia is very structured, type A, organized, has her ducks in the row. <laughs> One would think. Well, no, that's what I think. <laughs> You're amazing, Alicia. And I'm more free-spirited, type B personality, where I like to... I, I actually secretly enjoy change to a certain extent, but even in all of my personality traits of being flexible and, and, and loving adventure, it's been hard for me, all of yeah. the change of this year. So we just thought it'd be good to talk about when you hate change, but you're confronted with it, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? Yeah, so, Lishi, do you want to kind of share some of the things that you've walked through this year? Oh, gosh. All the changes? Yeah. The um, good, the bad, the awesome. I don't know, this year has been kind of an extreme year of change for me. Um, I mean, life is always ever-changing. Like, there's the good changes. You know, I've right. um, had three kids and three years and that's a massive change in life and but those are those are good changes you know right. and um, but there's still changes you still have to adjust and you still have to um, course correct and, and 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 make life happen but when you're faced with the amount of extreme traumatic change I think yeah. is um, the way I would describe it and traumatic change I think is probably the hardest thing to face yes you yeah. know we live in a constant world of change that's the way God created our world is changing it's built on four seasons right um, if you think about creation creation was change right you know so like it true. was going yes. from darkness to light to chaos and all this stuff happening to formation of heavens and earth and so he created change that wow. he he created our world out of change so there's those those things are are good but when you're faced with a traumatic change like I was this year basically i mean you you know most of it but Lance's mom who was our um primary caregiver of our children so that my husband and I could both work and pastor full time um she passed away super suddenly, tragically, um, and really caused us to put the brakes on our life and and yeah. look at everything. Like there was nothing was in order, nothing was planned. There was literally nothing that was going to look the same after right. that moment. Right. Um, and when you lose someone that's that much a part of your everyday life the amount of change that you have to go through emotionally and physically is kind yes. of extreme. Yes. Um, and we had to change how many days I can, you know, come into the office, who's right. going to be looking at my, looking after my kids. You know, I was always super comfortable with um, doing what I do for a living at this church and, and loving on people because I knew that my kids were getting the best care that they could get through right. their, their Nana. And then all yeah. of a sudden, none is gone. Yeah. And now I'm having to look at all of these changes and right. all of my life. 
And I think the biggest thing was God put in this season, I felt God just say, be still wow. and trust me. These are changes you can't control. Right. You can't, you, you could not have done anything else to make this happen differently. Wow. And those are the hardest changes. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I had my moments of crying, of losing it, um, feeling completely out of control. And I think that's okay. I feel like when we yes. lock ourselves in a closet and right. tell ourselves we can't feel these things, then right. we're trying to control the change itself. <laughs> so true. I'm but, guilty of that. Yeah. <laughs> I think the best thing to do in that moment when I was faced with that um, extreme change and having to adjust every day of my life will look completely different for the rest of my life because of that. Um, I had to really go to a place of trust. So good. And releasing. Yeah. And I just, I mean, if I was honest, it was like you're heartbroken and now you're right. faced with life. Right. <laughs> and it was, I just constantly remember God is the God of today, yesterday, and forever. Beautiful. He, he's, That's his so love true. is unchanging. Like Psalms 107 says, his love is unchanging always going to be the same yes and so I I had to rest in in that and really go to battle for trusting him through that change right. I couldn't I had nothing else yeah I was when empty some, it's like when everything gets stripped away yeah you're you're actually able to see what you <sighs> actually believe and what is actually true yeah because yeah. Even this whole year has been that. Yeah. And I mean, that is, we're talking about trauma, but then also just practically speaking, us as women, we're kind of the ones that set the atmosphere totally. for, our, for our family, for our homes. Yeah. Even if you aren't married, you still set the atmosphere. Like I mm -hmm. think God put that in us as women to be mm -hmm. the carriers of atmosphere. And so that was something that I realized really quickly when you know, the shutdown started in March. It was like <sighs> within one week, I lost my preschool for yeah. my son shut down. My nanny moved back home with her parents. My parents were work. my mom's in the medical field, so she wasn't able to come step in, help at all. We weren't able to see my family. And I mean, this is like surface level, but my housekeeper, who did my Nothing laundry? Level. Come on, that laundry is huge. You guys, <laughs> when you I have worked, small children, <laughs> I worked really hard. Like I'm very motivated. My business outside of my ministry, I'm motivated by like fun and yeah. like, can somebody please do my laundry? Like I am not good at my laundry, <laughs> yeah. and so I was blessed. I made this yeah. like yeah a year ago. I hit this business goal where I'm like, all right, I'm hiring a housekeeper. I'm never gonna do my laundry ever again. <laughs> Amen. And then overnight, <laughs> the loads just started stacking up on my couch, yeah. and my children were wearing very strange, mismatched <laughs> outfits, and I was losing yeah, yeah, my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My whole family, my husband was working, doing like really important business calls. He's an engineer by trade, and his niche is working with government agencies and people that are, like work in the Pentagon. He'd be like on a phone call in his office, with somebody from the Pentagon and my kids are losing their mind and I am losing my mind trying to keep them quiet. Yeah. So it was like overnight, the worst changes happened yeah. from a practical standpoint. And I felt like completely out of control. And I think, um, and I want to talk about, you know, there's kind of two paths when we're confronted with change, like the unhealthy coping mechanisms mm -hmm. that I think are in our nature that I realized quickly, wow, I need to figure out how to cope and how to process these changes. Yeah. And then there's the healthy things. And I want to kind of go down both of those avenues. And maybe for you guys that are listening, you can relate or connect with some of these things in both sides. I know that I can. Because I've had so many conversations and even like myself venting, like, I feel out of control. And that is not something that normally I'm complaining about mm -hmm. because I'm an Enneagram 7, I'm type B, I'm always wanting to change, I'm always wanting an adventure, like I always have a vacation on the books, like I am 
constantly seeking change, but not this kind of change. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, like I said, there's good change, which is fun. Like, oh, we're going to go on a trip. And, right, yeah. Oh, you know, I'm buying a house. And then there's the yes. not good change. And there's the yeah. sudden change. And I think there was a lot of sudden changes for a lot of people yeah. in this year. You know, even me, and before Lance's mom passed away, um, you know, we were faced with Lance losing his brand new job. And so crazy. I remember when he called me, I was at North Campus, I was working, I, he, he's like, babe, this is what happened. I was like, okay. I held myself together for about 30 seconds. I hung up the phone and I was like, ah! like on the yeah. couch and I text Stacy and I was like, I don't we know, love you, SOS, Stacey. like please call me, I'm melting down. It's okay in those moments of change, I think. Everyone needs a Stacy. Everyone needs that <laughs> yeah. friend that your world is falling apart. And you can reach up and grab the phone and call yeah. somebody that is going to, you know, just totally. be wisdom and love well, all yeah. at the same time. And pray for you and, like, and encourage you, you, you know. And Some she cookies. just said, oh, gosh, friend, I'm so sorry. Well, she took a few minutes to call me because she has a very busy <laughs> life. <laughs> but, um, you know, once we talked, she, she talked to me. And I was sobbing. You know, I was like, how could this happen? We just... Like, I think for us, we just gotten through a massive breakthrough. We felt God behind us. We were in a good place financially. Wow. And and then poof, all of that was gone in a second. And I remember just losing it. I think that's an okay thing. Like, mm -hmm. when you're faced with that, you know, extreme change, which I think a lot of us have been this year. I think a lot of us have felt the financial changes yeah. and you know, and then just the atmosphere is constant change. Like, yeah. oh, are we going to be in lockdown this week? Are we like, oh my what's gosh. happening? Right? Like, yes. none of us know. Yes. Um, so I think knowing that in that moment, I was okay to have a moment, but then coming out the other side of it, or even like later that night, processing it with God yeah. and, and God's my safe space. You know, so when good. you're in those places, right? And when, you know, you lose your laundry person, I mean, but moms, can I get an amen? Anybody yeah. wants to bless Katie, you know what to help her with, <laughs> go fold her laundry. Uh, just kidding. I will love you forever. <laughs> my baby's Shameless know. plug. <laughs> they know how to get the tip, fold my laundry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. For me, I'm an acts of service person too, in that way. Like, if you do something extra to make my life a little bit easier, I'm like, yes. That I love helps you so, so much. much. I yeah. love you. <laughs> but I think, um, you know, there's that there's that good processing of change. I have yeah. not always processed change that way. I, as Kate, as you mentioned, yeah. like I'm a type A person. Right. So for me, I or, I'm very organized and very structured. Um, I think having a mass amount of children all at once has really helped me <laughs> to like break the any element of control. Yeah. Like <laughs> you have three small children, you never know what bag you're gonna pick up that morning. Like even today, <laughs> complete mm -hmm. chaos. But I made it. I'm here. And you, you look know? fabulous. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> um, but it, you just those those are the things that you know. If you are a Type A person, okay. Am I operating in the spirit of control right now? Does wow. it have to be this way? Because if not, I'm gonna lose my ish. Right. Or am I gonna like just walk through this moment with grace right. and peace and wisdom? You taking know, that moment. Taking that moment. I found, and I'm sure that you found this too, um, there are some knee jerk things that that happen when people feel out of control. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's made me really sad is yeah. the, this knee-jerk reaction to just run away to something. Oh gosh, yeah. And we've seen- Hiding. Yeah, mm -hmm. just like, oh, I can't handle this. I'm just gonna try to go. It's like the grass is greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. If your grass is, you know, a little dry or you're, you're freaking out thinking that if I go somewhere else, then it'll solve all my problems. Yeah. And it's just not the case. It's not, the Bible says like to plant yourself. Right. And um, I actually had this picture a few months ago when I was praying and, and people were, their roots weren't deep enough. And so they were just getting plucked out of yeah. the dirt and just blown. And you know, dandelions, like they're, they're made to like the wind will to blow, to mm -hmm. blow in their seeds scatter or whatever. But I actually saw people like dandelions because they had 
allowed themselves to become easily picked up by the wind. And mm. if you're not planted, then you will get beat up by the tossing and the turning and the, I mean, gosh, you just go on Instagram well, and it's like, yeah. this, you know, this opinion and this worldview and you should be doing this and you should All be right. doing that and you should be thinking this. And there's so many things that are constantly being thrown at us. Mm -hmm. And I even think like, for me personally, a worldview, my worldview, I've never had to fight so hard to be secure in my worldview um, yeah. in year 2020. Yep. And the change that is being, there's so many bullies mm -hmm. in the world that are, I know. you know, bullying people into wanting to think this or latching onto this movement or this slogan or these different things. It's like, if you're not planted, then you're going to get, you're going to get picked up and beat up a bit. Yeah. Um, but so that's like one thing that I've seen and I've been, I've been, I've had to check myself because it's easy to get carried up in the emotional rhetoric of what's mm -hmm. happening in our world. Yep. Um, but then the other side of that and walking with people and we've, we've experienced trauma this year and, and loss of a family member and job security leaving with my husband's new business and all these different things. Um, and it's so easy to just wall up, mm -hmm. like to yeah. allow your heart to become unapproachable. Right. It's like a self, well, like a it, it's self protect mechanism. self defense. Yeah. At its core, which yeah. is ultimately control. I'm going to control right. the environment around so that I don't feel right hurt or pain. And I think change gives you two options. You can either walk through it as a healing process or you can walk through it hurting you. So true. And going back to your dandelion example, I think that it's very true. If we're not rooted and our roots aren't deep and you get picked up and you're a dandelion in the wind, you don't know where you're going to be planted next. Wow. If you think about it, like dandelions so just good, spread Aisha. their seeds yes. and they just go everywhere. Some of them will end up in good soil. Some of them will not end up in good soil. Right. Some will end up in water and drown. Yeah. And some will yep. end up in another tree and just sit there with nothing to grow on. Wow. <laughs> so, so, I mean, true. my kids love blowing dandelions because they love to see the just everything kind of floating yeah. away. And I think for me, the only thing that's brought me constantly through change successfully and I would say, I could say that I've, I've been able to like walk through change relatively successfully now, even though it's never easy, right. I'm able to, to do it, is being rooted, is being planted, is having a foundation so in a solid church that's there, that's constant. Yes. Knowing that, that God is for you, so who or what can be against you. Yeah reciting that to yourself and and knowing that he has a, a big bright future i prophesy yes. that over my children every night yes. your future is big your Love future that. is bright you know and no matter what you're faced with that day or that next day you know even you know dealing mm -hmm. with kids crying over the yep. phone <laughs> five minutes ago <laughs> real life situation real life like situation ago. <laughs> yeah um it's you know, true though you, you know that their future is going to be okay. Yes. Because you, you prophesy those things into existence. I think prophecy over your changes wow. is so important. Yes. So like, much prophesy yes. the good part of your change. Yes. If, the, if you're so faced good, with a bad situation, like, like example, Lance's mom passing. Bad situation. Never, ever going to be happy about that. Okay? Right. Like, I'll be, okay, lie. I'll be happy when I get to heaven and I can high five her <laughs> and we can do our, you know, big yeah. family hug and reunion. But on earth, I'm not right. going to be happy that she's gone. Right. Even though she's hanging out with Jesus. Um, but it's what you choose to do in yes. that moment. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and kind of like just going, okay, I'm, I'm going to choose to see the good thing in this. So the good thing is I get to spend a little bit more time with my kids. Beautiful. You know? Yeah. I get to be more part of their life than I was previously. Is it a challenge? Is it a change? Is it an adjustment? Yeah. 100%. Right. Um, has it been hard to find the right person to help me on the other days? Yes. But I know that even through this, like, you know, when, when I was processing this with pastors and kind of talking about it, they were like, Alicia, 
God has the perfect person who's going to be more of a blessing to you than yes. you could ever imagine. Yep. They're going to help you in your home. They're going to bring peace. It's going to be easier for you. And and focusing on those things than the the challenge that I'm faced with. Right. You know, even just in the last three weeks, like the unsettling yep. journey I went through with childcare, yep. and feeling like pulled in a hundred different directions. I knew God had a plan. Like that was probably my deepest moment of trust was that moment, the last wow. three weeks. And God just said, Alicia, because every time I tried to fix something, I, yeah. I was trying to do it in my strength here. Like mm. I have the ability, I can fix this. Mm. I know how to do this stuff. I can figure it out. Every time I tried, three times, door slammed in my face, bam. Like not just like kind of like yeah. subtle. It was like, okay, this person's the truth. Bam! Nope, got a full time job. What? Like, who's getting full time jobs these days? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm like, yeah. hmm, okay, all right, God. Okay, yeah. so finally I get the clue. God says, trust me, I'm working it out. And then bam, 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 all three things, like three wow. things happened all at once, like in an hour. And it all lined up perfectly. It's beautiful. And now I have this beautiful person in my that. world, you I know? Love that. So, yeah. But I yeah. hung on to the positive part of the change, right. not the painful part of the right. change. Not the, I didn't let the lies of, you're not capable, you can't do this, you can no longer do what you used yeah. to do for the church, you can't, you're not a good enough mom. You're, like, those little lies that come mm -hmm. at us, it's taking every thought captive, yes. especially in a world you of guys, constant change. I, I love that you said that, and I even want to add this to that, mm. because... Um, if you're not aware of your thought life, mm -hmm. then you're going to yeah, totally. be in for it. And if there's been anything that I have learned and I have harped on, and my East Lake <sighs> Cherish girls know this, we have got to turn to the Word of God. Yeah, amen. You have to do that. And it has to be, I, know, I hate to say this, in my opinion, what I found in my personal experience, if I do not get into my Word and spend time meditating on the Word of God at the very beginning of my day, then I am susceptible to so much mm -hmm. that it's harder for me to discern, it's harder for me to filter things correctly because of the season that we're in. Um, and so with everything changing so much, the only thing that never changes is the Word of God yes. and the principles of God and the promises of God. Mm -hmm. And so I just encourage you guys, and something that I've been really fighting to find um, a rhythm and a ritual with my mornings and um, <laughs> every mom <laughs> I know and it means setting my alarm it means setting my alarm early when it's still dark <laughs> yeah when it's when it's sh when you shouldn't be awake uh -huh. if you have little kids yeah but um, if you don't then enjoy the season mm -hmm. of being able to wake up in the daylight and read your Bible and, and have a coffee <laughs> with no one yeah. going mom! but I've heard um, <laughs> I, I heard it somewhere, I can't remember where, change is the only constant. Mm -hmm. And yes. it's true. It's so true. If there's anything that we can count on, it's that change is gonna come. And there's some changes that are comforting. Like I actually love the change of the season. Going from, you know, we're we're going mm. into fall now and all the beautiful, amazing things that come with fall, the pumpkin spice lattes and the pumpkin decorating and mm -hmm. the baking and all of that. Like I love embracing that part of the change from summer. Mm -hmm. And every turn of a season I get really excited because it means, you know, I get to go pick out some things from home goods new. and <laughs> new activities yeah, to do with my family totally. and my friends. But um I just have found in this year and I've, I've come out of not coping well with things where I would have anxiety attacks yeah. or panic attacks, and it always came from not feeling in control. But the truth is we're not in control anyway. So when change comes, it shouldn't trigger us trying to control things. Yeah. It should trigger us to embrace what God has for us in that new season. Yeah. And so a thing that is like a mantra for my life is rhythms and rituals. So no matter that. what is happening, I know that I can have rhythms to how my household is run, yeah. whether or not I have help, whether or not my relationships are in a good place or in a bad place. Mm -hmm. I've put into place rhythms and rituals 
and um, it's helped be that constant to where I don't feel like I have to control. And are we not seeing like the full manifestation of the spirit of control? A hundred percent. Like yeah. with people trying to sanitize. Like there, I saw a video in the planes oh, of like people Lord. like spraying clouds of. I don't even know what to like sanitize and like you walk through these arches where it's like they're spraying people because they're afraid of germs and Ew. it's like you have to pump hand sanitizer on you no matter where you go and like all these things and yes it's good to like you know have good hygiene praise the lord we're finally learning how to have good hygiene as a society <laughs> i'm like wow yay i feel like it's like a toddler <laughs> classroom driving on the freeway wash your hands i'm like this yeah, is what is, is so in true. my son's <laughs> preschool <laughs> class. That's so true. And but, then you have to remind everybody to sanitize their yeah, hands in the top of the class. Yeah. It's, and it's silly to, <laughs> you know, it's funny to make fun of some of that stuff. But I look at the root of that is needing or wanting to try to control your health or right. the things happening. Yeah. And at some point, you do have to surrender and make some choices. But you can still have those rhythms and those rituals in your life. Like... As a mom, I have a rhythm for my kids' day, and it's not based off of the clock. It's based off of um, the things that we go to where they know what to expect. They're so little. But even for myself, like I'm learning right. how to take care of myself through mothering my toddlers because I need that too. I need some type of consistency. So I started working out um, again, which has been huge. Like there's some good coping, <laughs> there's there. good coping mechanisms <laughs> that help our mental health, yeah. you know, making time where I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about anything. I'm just having fun with my husband. I'm like, Mike, can you take me out to dinner and let's just flirt? Like oh, yeah. where we don't talk about serious things or go out with your girlfriends, you know, totally. have a beach day, like make time where you put some boundaries up where yeah. you are able to enjoy your life. Um, and enjoy all the things that God is wanting to get to yeah. you. Yeah. Because 100%. it helps. Like, yeah. it helps having that perspective and, like, what you were saying, taking captive your thoughts. I will, and I, I went to counseling um, when I was in my early 20s for my anxiety. And that was the very first thing that my counselor walked me through was how to take captive my thoughts. I had no control over my thought life. Yeah. Like, a thought would pop in my head and I would. I would just chase it down the little rabbit hole and it usually ended in I'm going to die or somebody's going to die or right. yeah. like right. it was horrible. Yeah. Um, so I just think if you need help and, and the Bible talks about the renewal of your mind, it talks about taking captive those thoughts. Um, a book that I really cherish is Mama Joyce Myers. Battlefield of the Mind yeah, amazing. is incredible for helping you cope with change in your life mm -hmm. um, because it is so much of it is mental but get in your word ladies get your physical bible open it up yes read a Not verse your phone, highlight it no put your phone in a drawer <laughs> yeah and ask god what does this verse mean for me right what do you want to say he's so good he will always reveal to you yeah what it needs in that season yeah and i i want to go on the other extreme because I, I love the rituals yeah. thing, but I think if you, if your rituals become your idol, you're now back so in the control zone yes. yep. of now it has to be because I need this. Right. So, which is all in yeah. control. So yep. for me, being a more type A personality and having a rhythm and, you know, I, rhythms are super important. Yes. I love rhythms and I've learned how to be more flexible in things because you are faced with constant change. And so I might have a schedule and a you know plan for my week, but I am flexible. And I think having that flexibility and really praying mm -hmm. that in, um, just, you know, ha having God. Because then your expectations yeah. are like constantly failing. Right, yeah, yeah. and you it's don't really feel good. like you're m like so behind the game because of I didn't get this and this and this done today. Right. You know, like if you are a checklist or a type A person, mm -hmm. it's really easy for that to swallow you whole. Um, and now you feel like you didn't complete your tasks or whatever. Um, so I think having that checks and balance and knowing that's the extreme. You that's know? really good. I used to make a checklist at the end of the day and cross it out of what I did do. <laughs> 
<laughs> just to feel good, like little like check boxes. I'm like, oh, I want to be a checklist person. I did this. Yep. I did this. Oh, oh feels so good right now. Woo, productive. <laughs> anyway, well, I know we're yeah. nearing the end of our time together. So I would just love to pray over um, all of you beautiful, amazing cherished yes. ladies as we embrace the change in our lives. But God, we thank you yes, so much Lord. right thank now you, that it says in your word that you are an anchor for our soul. No yes, matter God. what change you, is lies ahead of us, that we mm -hmm. can depend on you, that um, you are anchoring us to your word. Yes, You're planning Lord. us in the house of God where we can be surrounded by community and love and wisdom. And I declare today for every single woman listening right now that she would find peace yes, and security God. in you and you alone, God, that no matter the no matter the storm, no matter the season, that she will be firmly planted and she will be confident yes. and she will have a mind of Christ. So we love you, Jesus. We thank you for all the things that you're doing within Cherished Ladies and in our church and our city. Mm. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Alicia, Yay, thank you so much. You. This was so fun. So fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this Cherished Conversation. Yes. Make sure to tune in next week. And we hope you have the best weekend. Mwah. <laughs>